Welcome to the Cinema Rag, where we celebrate the greatest and worst in Hollywood films and their most self-indulgent, narcissistic actors, directors, and producers. Here, we will laud and malign Hollywood's seedier elements with levity and humor. They love cinema as much as anyone does, and they've been talking about it for over 30 years. Time to get trashy. Here's Gregory and May. Hello, everybody. This is Gregory, and welcome back to another episode of... The Cinema Rag, I hope you're doing well today. Today we're going to continue the series Sexy Saturday and talk about Elle Fanning. Now, many of you might not know who Elle Fanning is. She is a young actress. You're probably more familiar with her sister Dakota Fanning, who is an older sister. And certainly both of them grew up playing precocious children, similar to the Culkin brothers, Macaulay and from Home Alone fame, and of course, Karen Culkin from Succession in other roles as well. So Elle Fanning, of course, because this episode, Sexy Saturdays are always just about objectifying women that I find attractive. Elle Fanning is very consistent with many of my other Sexy Saturday editions, probably most in line with Amanda Seyfried, young Seyfried, young Daisy Edgar Jones, uh, young... uh, uh, Kira Knightley and so forth. Just very, very fresh faced. Just the very pale, I talk about I have a type. Pale, blonde or dirty blonde, but not platinum blonde because platinum blonde looks fake. Blonde or brown hair or dirty blonde, very pale skin, typically colored eyes, but it's more of what they exude. It's more of the of the kind of, I I like the virtue signaling ingenue look. We've talked about different different women here. Most of the women that I've picked kind of fit that role. There's exceptions like Eva Green and Marianne Cotillard and some others, but as a whole, they kind of fit this this archetype of sweet ingenue. Emmy Russell was another one that we had as well. So Elle Fanning is 5'9". She's 24 years old. And her career is pretty full. She has quite a lot of work under her, and it's because she started at at such a young age. Now, as I mentioned, her older sister, Dakota Fanning, who I, I think was a good child actor. If you think of I Am Sam and War of the Worlds and um, the Denzel movie in Mexico, uh, I can't, it's escaping my mind right now. She's a, She was a great actress. And then I don't think she's as good as she got older. I, I still always make fun of her when she's in the Twilight movie. I think it's the second one where they introduced her as Jane. And essentially her acting is just staring, just gleaming at somebody or glowering at somebody. I just think it's pretty funny. But um, Man on Fire. That's right. Dakota Fanning was in Man on Fire. It just came to me. Her sister, again, started out pretty young. She was in I Am San as well, Daddy Daycare. I mean, these are all very young uh, movies where she was young in these movies. Deja Vu, she did with Tony Scott, so again, that's going to be Denzel. Babel, that was in Yoritu. She's got a, a role in that. Curious Case of Benjamin Button. I mean, she's working with amazing directors at such a young age. That's Fincher. And you look really her big role, her big breakout is Super 8 in 2011. Again, very young. She's only going to be 13, 14 at that age. She's doing that with J.J. Abrams. Then she does the movie Twixt, which is a very small movie, but it's just, I don't know. Directed by a guy named Francis Ford Coppola. Then she does We Bought a Zoo. Plays very young there. Cameron Crowe. So again, working with well-known directors. Then she's probably most famous for... Because I think Super 8 was more of like an ensemble movie. Maleficent, 2014. That's the big movie. Angelina Jolie. And she's in that. And I believe, not that I am a big fan of these movies. She plays Aurora otherwise known as Sleeping Beauty. So kind of a big role, and that probably is what got her probably more the most attention. Then you see her do indie works like 20th Century Woman. That is a movie 
with quite a lot of people like Annette Benning and Greta Gerwig. Not a big fan of Greta Gerwig's directing, but she's in that. Then you see her later on do The Beguiled, which both May and I think is an excellent movie. This is a movie done by Sofia Coppola, who both of us think are, I think we both had our top five Nepo babies, if you go to that episode we did. But it's the movie where Colin Farrell is a Confederate soldier who stumbles, a Union soldier, I should say, who stumbles upon a, a boarding house, a boarding school for girls. And it's got Nicole Kidman, Kirsten Dunst, and Elle Fanning are the three women that he's, we'll just say, maneuvering around. It's a, That's just a great movie. That year, she also does Mary Shelley. Again, this is, she's only 17, 18. Mary Shelley, she plays Mary Shelley, so it's a period movie that takes place with the, the kind of tumultuous life that she had with Percy Bysshe Shelley, the romantic poet. I've seen that movie. I think it's great. And then Maleficent sequel, 2019. And then she's also doing television during this time. She has small bit parts like in CSI Miami and House and you know, these are very early on. But really, her probably her most prominent television role is on the Hulu show The Great, which I love. I don't necessarily like some of the historical uh, liberties they take in the show. I am a humongous fan of history and I am a humongous fan of Catherine the Great. I can't tell you how many biographies I've read on her. Fascinating woman. I love history. You could give me a year and I could tell you who was the American president, the British monarch, the French monarch, if there was a French monarch at the time. The Russians are, I, I can, the, the Spanish and Habsburg rulers in Austria. I could tell you these things. I was just a stupid, nerdy kid in high school. But so a television show that uh, that deals with Catherine the Great as the, the protagonist, along with her her husband, played by Nicholas Hall, great actor, Peter, is totally up my alley. So I, I do enjoy the show. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe that she has gotten some critical praise for the show. I think she's gotten a Golden Globe Award for Best Actress, if I'm not mistaken. And she's also got a an Emmy Award for her role as Catherine the Great. So kudos to her. But she, I would say, in all honesty, is not necessarily classically beautiful. She, compared to someone like Kira Knightley, she just has... Let's take I a wanted break. to let you know about some of the other feeds here at the Eclectico Gregorio. The oldest one we have is... The Awakened Man, which mostly deals with holistic health, medical cover-ups, ways to biohack your life to ensure longer longevity, medical conspiracies, and naturopathic stuff. We also have, and that there's probably about 400, 500 episodes over there. We started that one back in 2017, 2016, I believe. We also have the Female Holistic Health Apothecary, which originally started as an essential oils feed. And there's about 100 episodes on essential oils, particular essential oils like rose and lavender and sandalwood and so forth. And then later I morphed it into more topics that are regarded for female health, female specific. We've had that feed also since 2016. And then lastly, we have Confessions of an Obese Child, which deals with my childhood obesity and trauma that came from it. So it's a great feed for those who dealt with childhood trauma that led you to have addictions to alcohol or food and i interview several people and what it was like to grow up overweight and all the difficulties of losing the weight and then keeping it off and trying to metamorphosize into a regular weighted person so check out those feeds at the eclectical gregory on apple or spotify she just has some of the features that I really like in a woman, just the, the, the kind of cherubic face. She has a very cherubic face, kind of like young Amanda, Amanda Seyfried did, did. Just that cherubic face and that just super pale, pale, pale skin. And you could see precisely why they casted her as Sleeping Beauty, as Aurora, because she is pale beyond pale, with the blonde hair, with the round cherubic face, and she just exudes 
it is, you know, she tries to change this in a show like The Great, but she just really exudes that sweetness, that kind of virgin signaling look, wholesome kind of look. And I think in addition to that, in addition to her looks, she is a good actress. And I think she's already eclipsed her, her sister, I think. And she kind of has, this is kind of a hot take, and maybe May wouldn't agree with this, but I think her future could be up there with Saoirse Ronan in that she's already demonstrated at a young age, at 24, she can do the period movies, she can do the accents, but she can also do mainstream movies. She doesn't really gravitate toward a lot of mainstream movies as of yet. We'll see if she enters the MCU anytime soon. But she definitely sticks to the indie movies like with Mary Shelley and The Beguiled and 20th Century Woman and so forth. So it'll be interesting to see as she gets older what her career is going to go to or how it's going to evolve. But she is a very up-and-coming, promising actress. Now, in terms of her dating life, she has been dating the same guy for some time. It's the guy, I think he was on um, on uh, the show uh, Handmaid's Tale, Max Minghella. So Max Minghella is an older man. He is at least, and it's 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 a weird thing because he's a shorter man as well. But they started dating in 2018 when they did the movie Teen Spirit, and she starred in it, and he wrote and directed it. And he is a good 13 years, 13 years older, and she is taller and younger than him. So I don't I don't see this this. Uh, this relationship continuing for much longer simply because she's definitely eclipsed him in terms of fame and stardom and also just women typically don't date men who are shorter than them and i think the age thing probably was attractive when they started dating in 2018 so you, you do the math they started dating when she was 19 and he was 32. so you definitely she's going to outgrow that with time and she's going to break up with this guy. And probably the, her next boyfriend's going to be somebody pretty famous. Pretty famous, if I had to imagine. So a lot of potential with Elle. She's a, a good actress. And I just see her uh, going great places and maybe even getting uh, an Academy Award sometime. Guys, if you appreciate my content, please rate and review right now. It only takes you five seconds. It helps with the algorithm. And also, there's two links in the episode notes. One's for PayPal to make a donation. And the other one is a link to the website, which hosts all four of the Eclectico Gregorio feeds, including all the episodes here. I would appreciate it. Until next time, take care. God bless and pray. Thanks for listening to The Cinema Rag. Please post an honest review on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcast. Check out the episode notes to visit our website and to make a donation. Lastly, follow the rag today. Until next time.